Yeah, man, we're back again. This is another episode, another installment, Rabbit Season Podcast. I believe we're on number four, right, Shay? Yes, sir. Hey, that, see, Shay gets paid the big bucks yeah. for this, man. I don't need. I remember stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, but look, me and uh, me and my next guest, uh, we're in me and uh, pause one. Matter of fact, pause one. What up? Uh, uh, we were in uh, shit talking mode already, and I. I think we talked already all the shit we can. So see well, you later, never, guys. Never. We got a lot. Oh yeah, shit. we got a I lot. I don't think mode. we could ever really yeah. run out. It's endless. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know wh- where do you want us to aim this shit talking? We you know got what I'm we got plenty of it, man. Whoever wants to hear it, but um, but you know right off the bat, bro, um, we've known each other for a cool minute. Um, I, I think I first met you coming as a guest t- to the B side show, yeah. but 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 that was like from the beginning years. So you've yeah. been you've been doing your music for a while, but he, the thing is, I already knew about you as an artist, because I go back like I remember seeing like uh, uh, some battles. You had some battles be- yeah. before the battles became really big, big. Yeah. Like you were on the stage with some some heavy hitters too. Dog. Yeah, that, those guys ended up uh, kind of taking the battling thing to uh, once it once it became like I was doing the backyard brawls, basically of of battle rap uh-huh. before it became what it was. And uh, a lot of those dudes that were good at, at those smaller battles ended up moving on and making money and creating somewhat of a career from it. So, But it was cool to, to do that. But I think I want to say the first time I met you was um, Deno had an album uh, coming out, and she did a, I want to say it was a video shoot, 33 and a third at the record store, and it was in the back. It was all graphed up. And uh, I, th- I think it was a shoot. It was a... Uh, Latina Beats was doing PR at the time, and I had hit her up to do PR for. Oh, that that might have even been before B-side, was was. it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay, because you know, you know, I remember Latina no, you know Beats what? was doing her shit. That you know who it was? It was Wacko, and Wacko was like, "Yo, you got to come on this thing that we're doing. It's called B-side." Oh, that's what I met. You. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so there, yeah, there, there. What's up, Wacko? Yeah. Hey, so it goes, it goes pretty far back. Yeah. yeah, he he's doing this thing with the the video and directing yeah. and all that shit, but um, yeah, we 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 started this. Motherfucker, it's almost gonna be ten years, dog. Um, That's what's up. With some other homies that, and they're doing their thing on another podcast right now. Um, but um, we're we're still doing our shit here. We're we're trying to we get to the essence a little bit of yeah of uh of hip hop and stuff. And that, and that's the only reason I kind of brought that up is um I, I feel like you've wh- I guess what you could say is you know people use the term sometimes loosely about paying dues. Yeah, like. I mean, it's safe to say all of us in this room have paid Yeah, I mean, dues. you can't go 10 years without paying dues yeah. because uh, money only gets you so far. Relationships only get yeah. you so far. Talent only gets you so far. Like, you're going to eat shit. If, if you don't eat shit, you're not in the music business. You're yeah, not right. I- in the <laughs> entertainment business. It's just part of it, unfortunately. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you learn from it, it, it'll help you uh, move forward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and hopefully inspire people that are watching you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, some of the, the people before we, uh, you know, talk some more shit. But I remember one of the ones I watched on stage uh, battling. I think it was Dumbfounded, right? Yeah. D- yeah. No, That's indeed. probably one of the most viewed videos that I had. And that battle, like, it was it was crazy leading up to that because we were supposedly going to be on a side stage. Mm-hmm. And uh, shit, the side stage was on the side of the side stage. Oh, shit. And it was like, uh, it was at the, I think it was the... I want to say L.A. Convention Center, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a Pit Bull concert. So I don't know how many battle rap fans <laughs> go to a Pit Bull concert. <laughs> yeah, so it was fucking awesome. weird. It was dale, weird. Dale. But, you, but I had like I was just laser focused, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna win based off of because at the time you had to be able to freestyle on a beat, so you had to rap on a beat, and you kind of don't really know what beat they're gonna play. So they yeah. could they could throw on a Pit Bull beat, and you, you yeah. know whatever it is and, and you got to adjust and then you you got to maintain the flow but also uh say something dope you got to be able to say something dope and then also uh hit your target you know headshot body shot and uh it, it's it wasn't easy to do and um i think he 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 definitely schooled me because on the side stage everybody around it was all hip-hop so you had to have those three elements the one element i didn't have when we got to the pit bull stage because that's where the last battle took place the whole crowd was all like 80% females. 
they're pit bull fans no. and i didn't i didn't account for that so i, I took the ass whoop and i took the lesson he beat me by cracking more jokes than i did uh -huh. Uh -huh. and they refused to let our dj dj because we were supposed to have the same guy transfer over so we were going to get you know we were going to battle over mass appeal and things like that like it dope you know instrumentals and it, that didn't happen we ended up rapping over like two short instrumentals and shit like that which is again you never know but yeah that that's one of the most viewed it was uh a learning experience. It's funny to look back on, but again, it's part of pain. It, it was dope, dog. It was dope. Hey, oh, it did that side of the side stage have a DJ or you guys just it did? Oh uh, shit, I forgot who the DJ was. My bad. It might have been uh, DJ Abel. Oh, it might have okay. been Abel. Oh and, shit, um, we know. You're him. talking about he's literally spinning vinyl, yeah. and this oh, is yeah. you know I don't want to I don't want to date it too much, but at the time like you know Serato and Tractor and all these things were barely coming out, so you had to have loot, you had to have bread to do that and a lot of the dudes that did that that had the money were doing you know clubs strip clubs things like that so they weren't necessarily hip-hop heads plus a lot of hip-hop heads the djs weren't down with it at all they kind of boycotted it and it was like whack so they're literally carrying around crates of records and that was the element that we brought but i think it was you know a knife at a gunfight kind of mm -hmm. deal mm -hmm. right. and uh it was it was weird but but again i learned from it and from then on i realized like yo all you got to do is be funny yeah, that because true. that that's what it boiled down to. I right? mean, and no, some of them, and uh, but that's the thing. Some of the, um, I, I think I, I, when it first started, kind of getting popular and gaining a little traction, um, it was over beats. Yeah, and I remember uh, DJs putting on so so. First off, like if you can't even rap on a beat, you're already gonna be. You, you see what I'm saying? So so, yeah. so there's a lot of dudes like right now, and I I mean I don't know I haven't really kept up too much lately but I'm, I'm on some of my uh you know uh rap battle stuff but i i know some of those dudes like are better in the element without the beat because of that because if yeah. there was a beat they probably wouldn't be able to ride the beat exactly you know? yeah. and, and you know it's not to take away from that because it does take a lot of talent yeah takes a lot oh. of it takes a lot of ability yeah the writing and all yes so i what's what's fucked up about hip-hop you know just in general it doesn't matter what element it is people tend to take anything you say as like a blanket statement. So if you're like, yo, I, I don't fuck with that. You're not saying that it's whack. You know, everybody in it is whack, this or that, whatever. Hip hop has a tendency to be thumbs up, thumbs down, gladiator style, when really it's more like, look, I can't drive around listening to battle rap in my car. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, if, if it's over some dope production and, yeah. and it, the song is about being the greatest rapper ever, yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, those guys definitely, that whole entire genre made it to where dudes are battling for 50,000 bucks. They're flying all over the world, all over, you know what I mean? And, yeah. that, and that's great. But that wasn't my aspiration. I always wanted to create records. I always wanted to do music because I feel like that has a, a more of a lasting impact. Right. I've even heard um, some, you know, I, we got to chop it up with quite a few of these guys. And, uh, and um, I've heard even some of the bigger names say that that wasn't their intention either but you know it kind of it it took them in and and yes it, it it's paying the bills and stuff but you know a few of them even strayed away from it later on yeah because they th like you said they w they would rather be creating in the in the studio creating actual records you know yeah what I'm saying? and not not everybody's able to make that transition to go from making dick jokes and things like that <laughs> to making a song where the song is about a particular topic you know, where you got to open up and talk about your human experience, your life, things like that. Yeah. A lot of them aren't able to do that. Yeah. And so 16 tracks are all about how dope they are and, and so how or, you are. Or how little your pee, -pee is. Exactly. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of that. And uh, But, you know, again, everybody does their own thing. And uh, for me, <laughs> I, I, I what, what really, when I got out of prison, it was when they pulled up the YouTube, uh, the channels of the battles at the time, and it was no beat, and they're playing it for me. They're like, yo, look, this is what's popular now. There's, there's money to be made. The crew that I was running with, they're like, yo, do you want to continue doing this? And I was like, not really. If there's no beats, if there's no, there's no, yeah. it was just weird because it just seemed like uh, very theatrical. And like, I, I, I didn't really, there was no musicality. There was nothing to it. So I was yeah. like, uh, not, I mean, that element was missing for me. And, and I got into music to do music. So anyway, moving on from that. Hey, that that's the, that's the thing though you you mentioned even from that first uh statement learning and like you and then you mentioned prison and then moving. 
moving forward it's it's uh, like we have known each other for for a long time and and uh the thing is i i think we continue to at least learn along the way and, and then hopefully yeah. yeah you know um but some people i think just like maybe ignore signals or sign or, yeah. or different things like a, and continue to go kind of a rambunctious path versus like we it's it's part of life we're supposed to mature and we're supposed to <laughs> yeah ch- we're supposed to eventually talk about different things and you know exactly. or or even care about different things because i know you know i didn't you I can't didn't rap about what you rapped about in your early 20s you know uh, that you do not like now in your you know whatever it yeah is in your 30s so, so you figure like, like uh you know when you, when you were your priorities you know the shit you wanted to do on a friday night when you were yeah. 16 is not the same yeah, now. Exactly. Oh, and, um, no. <laughs> you know, like uh, I seen a meme. It said, uh, I remember I used to uh, sneak out of the house to go to parties. Oh, now yeah. I sneak out of parties to go to the house. Oh, yeah. yeah because that's that's yeah. some real shit. Be- because, you know, you start to, re- as you get older, you start to realize, like, yo, there's, there's a lot of motherfuckers here that I don't really want to be around. And yeah, like, there's, yeah. But when you're a kid, it's exciting, uh, you know, the experience and things like that. But as you get older, you realize, like, yo, you know, it, it's kind of weird how, how that works. But when when it relates to rap, it's like, you know, if as long as you talk about growing, as long as you talk about things like that, you'll always have material. You'll always have content as long as it's real. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of guys don't want to do that or they can't. I don't know what it is, but to each his own. I mean, you know. Hey, I remember fucking going home. But like, ah, oh shit, was I still in? I think I was at the end of high school, I think. I think I was working at like McDonald's for side bread and and uh I remember hey dog they would have parties after like yeah. and I would be with older cats yes. and fucking chicks and everything and fucking we'd literally get like maybe like an hour two hours sleep I'd go home <laughs> and then be back at hey, fucking dog, work and then I, I'll go back to work and I remember being at work going uh, I can't, I'm not going to do nothing when I get But as soon as it started getting to the end of my shift, you were looking forward. I was to already it. ready yeah. to go out yeah. again. And uh, I said, man, after a shower, I'm ready to go again. Yeah. And I'm like, man, my bro. very fir- I still remember my very first hangover. I had to go to work and I, I was like 17 working at Burger King. And yeah. W- with all the greasy food it's horrible uh, right feeling like man i'm never I'm, i don't it's not for me you know and look at me now i'm about to finish this 12 pack right now <laughs> yeah yeah now that yeah that's it's what an I'm acquired saying. taste yeah yo and that's that's one of those things that i'm grateful for is like all the yeah i went through a lot of shit but i'm grateful for it because yeah. i did learn from it and i and i'm richer for it because i have things to talk about and it's yeah. oh yeah you know and 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 then besides that like you know, I get it. Like, I, I wish I had a little more money, too, maybe yeah. just, but not a whole lot more. See, I ain't greedy like that. Man. I ain't trying <laughs> just to. Just a little I, I don't bit need, more. I don't need that on my own island and all that, but um, I would like to just maintain off what I love doing. Yeah. And I'm and I'm getting closer and closer, but I'm still not there yet, bro, yeah. so I still do what I got to do. And uh, But I was going to say, um, along the way, even, even growing up, like, we we had like most it was a single mom raising me my yeah. brother and then later my my youngest brother um uh, came along and and we moved a lot around a lot I, I mentioned on the show before but you know my mom did what she had to do but those are things like along the way that i learned like so when i got old enough i i wanted to get a house like so where i don't have to move unless i feel like moving. yeah like so i got to like so these are things like that is a lesson because i I, I did something about it because I don't want to do that shit. No yeah, more, you know? uh, cry, uh, uh, Rex. Uh, yes, rest uh, in peace, my brother. Uh, she mentioned she's like, hey, look, you know, um, we, you know, a lot of us grew up with that, where you know the mom, you know, the mom, single mom, was mm-hmm. working, things like that. So where do you go? The streets. Mm-hmm. So you learn in the streets, and uh, she said that she chose to. To wor- build her schedule around her kids, not the other way around. Yes. And like you know, that that's definitely not easy. Having having kids to provide for is mm-hmm. is not easy at all. But to do it the other way around, where you're like, hey, I'm gonna make money for you guys, but I'm gonna make sure you guys are straight before I go out and make money. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it is, because you don't you don't want them to run out and you know have to learn the way we did, you know? Yeah, and I think what what's crazy about that, Mer- bro, because. Uh, you're a father as well and the, the thing is is like all my homies too that have kids now that are older too um i think everybody c- 
kind of did learn because they they raised their kids a whole different way yeah. and it's like you know what i mean they have certain different values and yeah. shit that i mean we it, it was almost like we were forced to learn and then learn the right way like in other words like we were we were thrown in the pool and learned to swim yeah. type of sink shit. or swim sink <laughs> or right? swim for yeah. sure and i i know uh i i see a lot more of that now in in i guess our generation or uh where we we don't want them to experience that where the generation before was kind of like fuck it figure it out like we did yeah and uh i mean you know it 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 toughens you up but at the same time it it limits your possibilities and your resources because you're like well shit i spent most of my time being tough you know i didn't i didn't research any of this shit i I wasn't given uh you know i wasn't taken here and, and shown this or shown that and it's not to blame anybody or make excuses but to say here you figure it out because i had to figure it out uh, i thought the idea was to make the next generation to set them up to be yeah, better exactly you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah but yeah the children are the future like yeah. the song says but the thing is um uh that's the thing i think also the the people that the ogs now that you would say you know, and I, I'm saying these are probably people my age and shit, maybe a little older, but they're they're willing to kick down that knowledge if people come and actually ask for it. Yeah. But I think um, now it's getting more where people are like expressing that that little bit of knowledge ahead of time before you ask for it type of thing, like putting more of a, a, a effort in. Yeah. Um, and 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 you can see it, bro. These kids are they're super smart. I mean the thing is is like yeah maybe we had to work for more of our shit and that was that's the thing like going yeah. on uh, you know I, what i mean i mean you gotta look at it like this this podcast there's a kid that is gonna listen to this and and take something away from it that we would have had to learn getting our ass whipped or whipping yeah. somebody's <laughs> ass in the street <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so you know be grateful for that but at the same time like you know a, a lot of the I, I think the biggest gripe that a lot of older heads have is that is basically like you guys are learning on the internet and we learned in the streets Mm -hmm. and you know i understand that part of it because there's a lot of things you can get away with online that you can in person like ice t said i get it you were raised i was raised by ogs you were raised by ig yeah i get it yeah and and then that's that's great but but like my son you know i i want to raise him to like hey look you know don't create a persona online that it's not something that you could back up in person like i know a lot of kids are getting away with that but something's going to happen where you're going to get jammed up in real life. And if you're not oh, able yeah. to back that up, you know, how's it going to look? Yeah. You could, you could tear down a, that account and create another one and, and keep doing that. F- and, and, you know, you'll get by on that for only so long, but you ain't a fucking man. If you do that, it's random, bro. We used to, you know, see cats just randomly in the mall and shit. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, there's that. Dude. Yeah. And this is before all that, was, yeah. you know, internet and shit, but you just recognize somebody. So if you're on, Lion popping and and you're showing your picture. Of course, someone's gonna yeah. eventually see people you. that are gonna re- recognize you that you don't recognize them. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean. So like by f- their face, you know they might have some kind of maybe they use you know the yeah. stupid pictures on the you know never put their actual face on there whatever it is. You don't know who these people are. Exactly. Time, you know? Like anybody could be following you. I'm yeah. sure my kid's mother has set up fucking 400 accounts <laughs> to keep an eye on what I'm doing. Yeah. Those are 400 and of your followers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. A good fucking portion of my follower is probably her with frivolous bullshit accounts uh, yeah. so but yeah I, th- I think uh that's a big part of it is is just you know i guess for my son is like hey look that world exists you could be whoever you want on there but you still have to leave your house you're yeah. still gonna have to so and if you get confronted and and none of that is really you except what comes with that like you know and big ups man for the jo- AI. Hey, um you know w- we'll get into this right now too the homie that passed away uh wreck one um at the at the car wash before the drive um and i saw your son there and i hadn't seen him in a while and it's crazy yeah how the years like because it's not been eight or yeah. nine or ten years since i've seen him but what i'm saying is i have seen him at that time because you used yeah. to bring him yeah, even I to remember th- that yeah, yeah yeah i used to bring him to the like the fundraiser whatever yeah, he the was shorter than you at that time like yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and it's funny because like uh i I've been to places, stores, restaurants, and they're like, oh, what about your brother? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's my son. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, it, we run into that a lot. So I just want him to kind of see, like, hopefully I lead by example, and it's yeah. a great example, because I don't, I don't want him to think that he can live on the internet. 
because you know it's 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 not going to be like that like yeah. you, you you know you are going to run into people you are going to run into issues and i want him to be able to handle it because you know being angry at a lot of things when you grow up uh you run into somebody and ha- somebody could cut you off in traffic and in road rage because of some baby mama drama some work shit whatever yeah. and then now it all just spills out onto this person who pretty much just got in front of you without a blinker mm-hmm. you know you don't need to beat him to death yeah you know, wh- you know what i'm saying it did it, it but I think uh, that that's just kind of something that I, I want to show him. We're like, you know. Hey, he even had the, the beard rocking, bro. Yeah. I he's was got, like, yeah. all right, shit. Yeah, he was. Little pause. Right yeah. There. So he's, uh, yeah, he was out there in the mix uh, helping with the car wash. And then when we did the uh, the event afterwards, the characters, he was doing the uh, the raffle tickets. Okay. And, and sure. somebody gave him an attitude. He told me afterwards when it was all said and done, he's like, hey, who's this lady? She gave me a hard time over this and that. But he needs those real world experiences. Yeah. How did, and he told me how he responded. And like that's that's what I want. I want him to build character and things like that. So And then, and then you could actually, like, like as the pops or the big brother or whatever, um, you could actually say like, man, you handled that good. Exactly. Or, or you know what I would have done? I would have said this yeah, instead yeah. and then they yeah. kind of learn but it's uh, a shame that somebody would um, even start yeah, yeah, yeah. a fundraiser for you know, <laughs> well the, the person that did it is a complete fucking idiot oh, anyway. uh, like, uh, and it is a well known <laughs> fucking idiot so uh, it's one of those things where like you're not really too uh, <laughs> I'm not really too concerned with it cause he had to ask me who it was hey I'm laughing cause I bet you, no, nah, I'm not even going <laughs> to say, I, I might, like, I probably could guess in, in less than three chances. <laughs> yeah, probably. exactly. But you, okay, but, but let, let's, let's talk about it, man, the, the homie wreck, um, his passing, what it, it kind of did too is um, do what, what he wanted to do anyways with the Unity Project in its own weird way. Is That's it, weird, right? It kind of like brought people back together that were kind of, you know, getting people to, to to have that vibe again of 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 community and gathering and, and yeah. for the love of hip hop and that 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 I took away from the, that day especially was dope for me. You know yeah, what I'm that that's that's kind of what w- it was. One of those uh, stop and look around, like, yo, you did it. You know, you look at the sky, you know, you're like, yo, you did it. You did what you set out to do, which is to bring a bunch of people together mm-hmm. because. Um, I know a lot of people do this for a business, like to, to them, has nothing to do with community, has nothing to do with culture. This is strictly a business thing. And I, I can dig it. I respect that. Um, you know, the ones that I don't respect are the ones that come in and pretend like they're oh, about yeah. the culture, community, you know, growing, bringing people together, et cetera, when they're just here to manipulate, use people and things like that. But with Rec, it was always genuine. Like, yeah. you know, if he didn't fuck with somebody, it was known. Uh, I, I just, you know, I identified with a lot of the things that, that he did and said. So I was like, we clicked. And um, it was just cool how it all came together. For me, I think, uh, you know, once he passed, uh, I was like, all right, well, shit. I got to make sure not only the people around here know, but it's got to create ripples beyond this. So that way the next generation has a rec one that has somebody who's like, look, I'm – I'm a hip hop kid. I don't have a ton of money, but I'm going to start throwing these shows. They're going to grow. I'm going to start bringing in headliners. I'm going to give these guys in the streets an opportunity to come rap here, DJ, make beats and give them an outlet. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you know, if if we continue to say his name and, and it continues to grow, it'll inspire another kid, you mm-hmm. know, that that's going to want to do the same and and hopefully take it even further. Mm-hmm. But but yeah. he's thrown some great shows too, man. I did, yeah, I, I mean there were some great times at some of the ones that he put together. I mean, and I told him that, and he even told me that was a uh, like a, a dope compliment for him. This was at a um, like I, I even hosted a couple for him yeah. and everything. But but um, I told him, hey, bro, like I think it was after like the first. I don't remember how many shows, five maybe or so. And I said, hey, you're onto something here, bro, because I only been to a couple of them. I said, but they were fun shows for me. Like yeah. I felt that I felt that um, why I always loved hip hop shit. That's, like, that's, that's what, what I heard. Vibes, about. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard amongst the crowd was like, yeah. th- like it's funny because he created a, a scene where it was pretty much you went to his show and you might not even give a shit who was rapping, but you went because it was hip hop. Right, See, right. that's the thing is like, oh, it's, it's a hip hop night. It's Rex mm-hmm. night. So you're like, all right, well, who's on the flyer? You look and you're like, well, I don't know who that is and I don't really care for that guy or whatever the fuck. <laughs> but you still win anyway. 
and you still because the DJ's got to spin. Someone was doing a live beat set, <laughs> and then you know you got to drink and mingle, and then see somebody you haven't seen in a while, yeah. and that's that sense of community that he created. And he was big on that, whereas like he could have took money from a lot of people to perform, and he just he chose not to because it would throw off the vibe, it would throw off the night. And uh, I always respected him for that because that's kind of how I feel in the same way uh, with, with doing certain songs and rapping on certain beats and, and appearing a certain way. So it, it was it was a big hit for me, but but yeah. Here, here this is what we're going to do. Crack one for the homie Rex. There it is right there. Order yeah, a, yeah, it was it was a big hit. So I figured, you know what, instead of. Uh, Instead of falling back and, and kind of like, you know, crawling into a hole, yeah. I was like, fuck, I got to, I, th I picked up the flag. Like, all right, well, shit, I got to wave the flag so that way people know. And it's, it's not about, I, I never wanted any of it to be about, you know, people praising me or giving me credit. Or and, you, and, and no, but I, th I mean, I think even from, like, I known you for a while already. So, like, we know the intentions are good. Yeah. But I, I think I'm just looking from anybody that just barely <laughs> knew about you. I don't. I don't think there's any way that you can uh, uh, see any intentions, but the. Like, I hope so. I hope so. Especially because you never made an anything about yourself, bro. And, it, and it's great that you say that about too. Um, how you know he you got inspired to keep it moving and like that like you're doing, but he also just like he did when when he was here. I know that he um, a couple of times when you're kind of like over them even doing music and he was kind of the one that yeah where you told that story about he, he's <laughs> the one that kind of kept pushing you what are you talking about what the fuck you yeah the so there, there would be times a big one was i didn't perform in la for like two or three years i oh, i remember this yeah, time. I, tur I turned down <laughs> i turned down money i turned down shows big shows yeah. whatever i was just over it because i felt like just from from the top to the bottom the whole thing's just rotten the whole entire system and you kind of already knew what you were going to expect when you go into the show like you yeah. could already predict it and and uh that that was i don't know it for me it wasn't necessarily a money thing where it's like yeah i can go over there and make a couple hundred bucks mm -hmm. but it the vibe is whack the, the 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 show is whack like just all around and i just don't want to be involved in that so i just kind of boycotted this whole entire area and he's the one like yo i i need you to be a part of what i'm doing and you know it was my brother so i'm like fuck i mean i wouldn't do it for anyone else so i was yeah. like fuck it i'm down so yeah. i became a piece of furniture over there at characters for yeah. like, <laughs> i was over there fucking all the time and uh but i would only do that for him because yeah of, of, of it was always genuine and, and you know what um even like shout out to cats like journey and yeah and 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 fucking uh uh Zenaloa and um well, all, the, all the cats movie. that came through pretty much on the that when we did yeah. the tribute yeah. show on b-side man that well, those guys really all killed it like it's almost like they were all inspired because yeah everybody tore it up that night man that, that yeah they, really they cool. were they were in that spirit so like we put that show together as uh rex you know that would that would have been rex lineup you know what i mean if he, yeah they, they were on a ton of his shows so it wasn't anything uh if we would have done in other words like because we've done takeover shows on the b-side show uh, so if it was like a it would have been the Unity Project takeover show. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a shout out to uh, the Gruesome Twosome. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Poker cookbook. Huge, huge shout out to Southern Crops because nothing would have been possible. <laughs> without, yeah, yeah, man. I just, you know, <laughs> so I, I just, you know, I, I just want to make that clear. But, yeah, everybody came through and shut it down. I feel like they, Poker, Poker wrote a, a verse. Oh, that they, verse. They, they wrote a song. That was hard. Uh, she said she had writer's block for a while, and she, she uh, was inspired after you know, after getting the news, and she and she wrote the verse, and uh, it's dope. It's yeah. a tribute to him, and, and how I felt that when she was performing that. Yeah. I was behind the camera, like. And I and after her, I think um, you know her writer's block went away because she's been recording. Yeah, it's good. And I, and I know because she's done a couple here. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so she's she's back in the in the mix, man. That, but that's dope, man. He he did inspire and all that stuff. It's just, you know, what I mean, like. Um, you know, sad because, like I said, when when we get back to maybe being able to finally go to shows again, yeah, I, I think we told this story already, but that was like, like when I would go to a show and then I would just hear, "Fuck you, yeah, rabbit," yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'd yeah, turn yeah. around and it would be Rex fucking flipping me off, yeah. dog, and it, and and I, and like I said, Rex not easy. You, you you have to see Rex. If you turn around, you're gonna see Rex. Exactly. And uh, so I would see him there, and and I kind of knew. 
Like I was at a pretty dope show. Like if hey, he was there, this yeah, this must exactly. be some hip hop shit. Exactly. Like, and some of them I was hosting. It was even doper. I, yeah. Like I've shouted him. Out. Like I remember even shouting the Unity Project out. And yeah, he could know, easily he could easily pull you out of whatever zone you were in. Yeah. And but it's funny because he's that one friend that could tell you talk shit to you, and uh, but but all love. It was all yeah. nothing but love. And and take take the whole you know hip hop out of it where it's like just you know man to man human to human friend to friend and i appreciated that a lot because i think a lot of dudes get into hip hop and rap and and they start to believe who people think they are oh yeah and then like he he was able he was able to pierce the veil on a lot of that hey. and uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to I wish I would have went like when you guys went on that road trip. Yeah, that. Those, hey, bro, that looked like a lot of fun. That shit looked like, like a movie. fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, it was one of them ones where I seen you get. I would see either Rex post or a post from you or John. I think John Henry. Yeah, was, John uh, Henry. Um, yeah. and I and I would say, damn, I should have went. Doug uh, just looks like a fucking. We could have made a fucking uh, straight to MTV. Yeah, fucking. like, and you know what's funny is. Uh, I wanted him to go because that's my boy, but also, like, I had said on, on the show, like, he was a... Uh, the was tour a, manager. He was a tour manager. Yeah, he was very He was very shrewd, so, yeah. like, he, he didn't fuck around. And um, I, I wanted to hire him, but I also wanted him to go as a friend. So yeah. I, I got both. I got yeah, the best of both up. worlds. So, like, we cracked jokes the whole time, told stories, you know, uh, went back and forth as far as, you know, our favorite albums and rappers and, you know, the typical tour stuff. We got, I, I said last time, like, uh, he was a big baseball fan, so anywhere we went, if they had a baseball team, you know, it was a required stop on the tour. And I was more than happy, like, fuck it, let's <laughs> go. So Yankee Stadium, That's you know, dope. wherever we were, and uh, it, you know, you get to see that that kid, you know, that face where you're like, you know, that was he checked that off his bucket list for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what's up. And uh, that's fucking that that was that was cool to see that and and be a part of that. And then just you know, a big one too was uh, his daughter. You know, everything was like every day calling you know checking me so like you know he inspired me a lot as a, as a father you know just the way he carried himself and things like that like i i took a i took a lot away from my interactions with him and i want people to see and know and remember who he was how he was so i'm working on a documentary for him oh that's a, dope and then the uh, the gear where can they get, uh, get the gear and yeah all i got the gear uh it's actually i created a, a big cartel for him so all the proceeds go directly to uh to his daughter to, okay. to the family the bean yeah it's it's uh r-e-k-1 t-u-p at bigcartel.com okay so anybody uh Rec checking out this, this podcast make sure you go um check that out um support it's, it's dope hip-hop gear anyways there's different stuff on there but also paying tribute to a brother that brought the good vibes with hip hop. Hey, real quick, I wanted to say a, a couple of my um, uh, memories with him is uh, I, well, I see one of them I didn't realize till later. I had so, I, like I hosted a it was a Defari Planet Asia show. Oh, dope! And uh, me, my brother Shay Whitey in the back, Crazy Race, um, Rec. Uh, we were chilling with who else? I think it was well, Ho- Do- uh, Lou and Do- Lou Man and Doll, Lou right? Lou Man and Doll. I yeah. think uh, uh, I think it was Jose back there from. Um, oh, that's right. From uh, uh, oh man, um, oh, Jose, man. the the homie that uh, fucking for L- Lauren Hill's tour manager. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Yeah, dog. Well, anyways, he's on yeah. every hip hop like this dude. And uh, who else? One more cat was back there. Um, I can't remember, but. It, I remember just all of us like been to so many shows, but we we're like hip hop heads. So that show was just like really dope for all of us. Yeah. And I remember like even posting my own shit and we got dope photos like those ones with all of the us. Far like, Eye and Planet yeah, Asia. Kill Plan- chilling with, with us and everything. With yeah. us so and Rec and, yeah. and me, Crazy Race. And, and I remember like just the vibes of it. So I, I posted and then I remember later looking um, just going back on on Rex page after the news I heard, and uh, and then just and just seeing his posts like it was like he it was like so dope for him those moments yeah and I and I thought it it just it was it was cool for me bro because you know I I feel those moments and and to to know somebody else's I and I know a lot of people do but 
he actually expressed it too. He was a hip hop head. So, you yeah. know, if he was at a show like that or especially like a Psycho Realm show, yeah. this fool was happy as fuck. Yeah, that's what I'm it. saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, see, you remember that look on his yeah, face. Like yeah, you, yeah. you could tell, like, he was a fish in water. It's, it's dope. For me, I, I just remember, well, I told this before, but like, when I, the way I first met him, was through the chat room on the b-side chat room because i used to be when we yeah. run the show because so, he started watching it from the beginning yeah because a couple artists that were on that you know and then, and then he started actually just tuning in even just you know just to check just, out what yeah. was going on and he'd check out the dj and, and, and so i started chatting with him there and then i then i'd start he came through i think to an event and we started seeing each yeah. other more you that, know, that that's that was, that was what leading into my other memory is that we i think we actually i think officially i'm not sure man maybe there was something else in between but i think we were like his very first interview too so yeah you know yeah. what i mean and he was i remember him even telling me he was because he, he wanted to do it for a while and he had been hitting me up too and but i think he wasn't quite ready yeah. and then even when he came he was telling me how nervous he was and all that shit but i remember he did like he did what he had to do he came yeah. and, he came and said what he had to say and he, <laughs> he didn't realize that he was actually pretty good at it. You That's know what, what I'm saying. saying. <laughs> I, I, I got sent a link of his for an interview after he passed. And I was like, damn, he's like, he's really good at it. Like he can, he can yeah, shoot he that. Because, yeah. you know, there's a lot of guys that are behind the scenes when they get on camera or when they get on the mic. For whatever reason, you know, they're jittery, they're nervous. And it's understandable. And for him, like. If, had I not known him, I would have thought that's something that he did all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, for yeah sure. and, then, and then after his first interview, then he started becoming a booking uh, manager for some of those artists because he yeah. hit me up. I, my, <laughs> one of my last messages I have from him, too, um, and actually I'm going to make that happen, too. Uh, he wanted to book Moody for an interview here, so we'll yeah. try, I'll make sure that we still make that happen yeah, soon. Hell you yeah. know? Well, we did uh, we did get a lot of them in, though, yeah. yeah that, that he, he would even put it like that, yeah, I'm their booking manager now, and I want to get them on the show. Yep. Like, all right, dude. And we, we always got our buddy in. So, hey, man, so make sure you guys go check that big cartel out, Rec 1. Uh, what is it? One more time. Uh, rec, R-E-K, the number one, T-U-P dot big cartel dot com. All right. Make sure you guys check that, man. It, and proceeds, again, go to his daughter, uh, the Bean, man. Uh, hey, pause. The thing is, you know, going through all these, you know, curves up and down and everything like that, man, Um Dur during your 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 music ven ventures and all that stuff you you've always seemed to kind of i mean besides a couple of the homies and stuff yeah um you you kind of did your own thing like you never went to like let me go who's popular let me go with this team let me go with this team like um you've been more of stand up on your own and and yeah. I, hey, that's something i've always respected no, i know and it. and, and you. whether you get that recognition monetarily or even like cats they should go be checking for shit yeah whether you get that or not and i know this for a fact because sometimes this happens to us as a show but i know that motherfuckers respect what you do so i appreciate that you yeah know, so I, I think i think when i first set out you know when you get into it you you want to you want to play for the dodgers you want to play for the yeah Lakers. you, you want to be drafted you want to play for the home team you know and uh, I was excited when I first started. Um, I had, you know, no experience with the music business aspect. N none of the politics, none of the things that go into it, wor working with the team dynamics, none of that. So when I, when I got into a team and then I, you know, worked with a couple different groups and things like that, I started to realize, like, uh, all it takes is, is one guy. It just, it's just one guy in the group, in, in, in the clique, in the crew, in the squad. And uh, over a chick, over money, over ego, over drugs. whatever. Drugs. <laughs> fuck, you name it, bro. You name it. Say no to drugs. Yeah, that. And, and what ends up happening is the whole entire train gets derailed. And, and a good example is, like, I used to be a huge uh, sports fan when I was a kid. And I noticed, like, some of my favorite players. At first, I used to follow teams. You know, you grow up with certain teams, your dads, your uncles, your grandpa, whatever. There's certain teams. You kind of inherit that. Um, but then I started noticing, I'm like, wait, some of my like favorite players have never got their rings. Why is that? Why did Dan Marino, why did Tim Brown, like, why did these people, how come they, and then I realized that's because they refused to trade them. They refused to build a team around them. There were certain aspects. And then, and then once I got into hip hop, I started realizing that where I was like, okay, I started looking at these teams and these squads and I was like, look, they all think they're Deion Sanders. 
and I'm using these older players as, as a point of reference, but they all thought they were that. And in reality, if you look at the scoreboard, none of them were scoring any fucking points, but they like to be prime time. They want to be on camera, do the interviews, oh, yeah. the dress, this, that. And that's typical rapper shit. So I realized, like, okay, I definitely don't want to retire without a ring. So, like, uh, you know, if I got to be traded to different teams or, or, or you know, if I got to play in Japan, which is basically what I did, I realized, like, yo, yep. uh, no disrespect, but fuck all of this. I just went to Europe. So I, I signed with a label in Europe for my first album because I, I, I knew no one in Los Angeles, uh, shit, pretty much no one in the United States would really give me a shot because here everything's determined by, you know, the YouTube numbers, the 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 social media social numbers, media. so on. And, and, you know, your your image, the public perception, how you look, uh, there's a lot to it because we're, you know, L.A. is the entertainment capital of the world. So because of that, if you don't fit the the if, if you don't fit what's selling. No tattoos on your face or whatever. Whatever it is, whatever it is at the time. Because remember, at the time when I first started, oh, yeah. that was it was different. Part of that. It was well, different. Nowadays, but it was different. So, like, you know, it, it's kind of weird. But anyway, so moving from moving on from that, I just started to realize, like, the less baggage, the the less I focused on trying to be popular here, the better off I was, and I reached more people that way by bypassing a lot of the popularity shit. Where I was like, look, yeah, I could position myself over there and be a part of that team, but I'm on a third string. I'm never going to get any playing time. Yeah, yeah. So fuck all that. Yeah, yeah, I could say, yo, I'm a part of this uh, fraternity, a part of this uh, history. I played for the Celtics, you know, a storied history, or the Lakers or whoever. But it didn't matter because I, I was never really, you know what I'm saying? I never really got any playing time. I, I never really got to contribute, and they never utilized my talent. So I was like, fuck that. I'm going to do my own thing. And I'll give you some examples. Like coming from L.A., you have, you know, the Project Blow. That's a big one, all due respect. But I went over there a few times. And then I, I studied more than just the, the music, the talent. I, I studied more than that. And I started looking into the business aspect because I got into the music business. So I started to see, you know, what guys were successful, which ones weren't. There's some factors that, you know, that I couldn't figure out or I'd rather not speak about or whatever. And I just analyzed every team that was out in L.A. making noise. And then I said, okay, well, fuck, none of these guys are going to fuck with me because I didn't go to high school with them because we weren't in the same graph crew. And it, I just realized, like, okay, all right, well, fuck it then. I'm going to go do my own thing. And so I kind of sidestepped a lot of that. And I went and created a buzz or whatever, then came back home. And then it was like, oh, what's up? And I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't, still didn't want to associate. I, I heard that this, like, from legendary mix master tony g man who has yeah. happens to be like he's i consider him like a mentor but he's someone i can talk to if i need to call like about something yeah. but he he told me this like fuck i don't know how many years ago but it's probably it was over 10 years ago for sure but he was saying like artists don't get it if you want to like go overseas bro they yeah. fucking love this shit right here it's yeah. too um saturated and if you're really serious like this is the career you want to do then take the risk and go take it overseas. to another marketplace yeah, i mean yeah. look if you're if you're selling fish to fishermen yeah, you're gonna you're, right you know what i'm saying it, it doesn't make sense yeah and uh or selling water to a well yeah yeah it's like <laughs> it's weird and like i think a lot of i think what that does is it it kind of it kind of shows you that a lot of these guys just want to be popular Oh yeah. It does it doesn't matter if they Ooh, rap, hey. if they break dance, if they do graph, if they DJ, if they make beats. It has nothing to do with the actual art of the music right. or anything. It's just if they run out of music then they'll just try something else to be popular. Yeah, exactly. So Yeah, and that that's what's crazy. I, I've noticed that as well. And there it's a and it's in a lot of different areas too, whether it's music, video, uh shows, whatever it might be, but it's like um someone like is even willing to like show things that like you normally shouldn't have to show well just, like that's y you know what i'm yeah. saying like like if i'm doing like a show here like i shouldn't have to show everybody my whole life so i could have a good podcast like you yeah, know what i'm saying exactly like, so uh, it, and it's weird because um you see people getting uh celebrated for showing all all of their dirt mm -hmm. where like that's uh it's encouraged like sh show us all the shit you go through and uh, 
But then at the same time, like when I put an album out or I put a song out, it doesn't have the same effect because you saw all of that already. So there's really no need to listen to that song. It doesn't have the same impact. For example, let's say, uh, you know, w- with, with Rec Passing, you know, let's say we didn't have social media. Um, and, I p- and I put a song out and it was meaningful. And then people that knew him heard the song and, and heard the shout out and, and, and they heard it in my voice and, and everything. It would have more impact than it does now because now it's like, oh, well, we know what's going to come next. A tribute song. Here comes the such and such shout out. Here comes this. So it's anticipated. It's expected. So it loses a lot of, I hate to say what we had, but it's, it, it's part of the game now. But uh, w- with that said, there's still stuff that I refuse to show people. A guy today, for example, I posted a picture of the shirt that I have that says, less politics, more dope hip hop. So he hit me up and he questioned me. And this isn't the first time. He's like, well, what does that mean? You know, what, what is your outlook on this? What, do you, what is your outlook on that? And I was like, well, uh, I don't know. Hey, do you ever? Hey, wait, I want to know. Pause. Do you ever give him the pause like pre-warning? <laughs> like, you really want to know the answer to this? I shit? did. I was like, I was like, well, you know, uh, I don't think my answer will be politically correct. <laughs> I told him that. So because I, I just I wanted to be known. And I told him, look, I reserve all of my political views, religious views, et cetera, I save all that for music. And if you listen to me, you'd know yeah, that, yeah. but but you don't. So, you know, sometimes that's why I don't use my Instagram to post a lot of political stuff or religious stuff or whatever, because that's what I got into music for. Yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, I, the average person who uh, can't, you know, or, or chooses not to do music or, or paintings or whatever it is, whatever art they express themselves with, they can use Instagram to do that. But luckily, I'm able to, to, to rap and write songs. So I use that to talk about shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it's it's crazy. And it would, on the street level, you know, you see a lot of guys with the guns and the money and the drugs. And it's just like, it's just it's just a fucking advertisement. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, shit, you know, it, it, it's weird because even, even that is like a marketing tool, you know? Uh, shit, I, I think it was a few years ago. It's been at, at least five years or something like that. But it was a kid. They did a cipher, and this kid pulled out a gun in the cipher. And the only thing anybody remembered about that fucking cipher was the fucking gun, which defeated the purpose of the cipher. <laughs> because you can't fucking rap. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, publicity stunt, publicity stunt, publicity stunt. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean. It's like, that guy will do anything, a wig, a dress, you name it, as long as he stays in the public eye. Those yeah. type of characters. People like, it was Takashi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, I was just gonna see you, uh, like, <laughs> hey, I was gonna say, like, was, uh, he probably is like, <laughs> I had a like literal question later, like, uh, that's probably, and I, not to, like, I'm not even gonna say his name no more, but um, that's the epitome of just being popular. But, yeah. But, yeah. like, okay, there's a couple, uh, like, I've heard stuff, okay, there's a couple catchy things here and there, okay, but how long, like, literally he raps like shit so yeah. like so no so it's like okay why do you got okay so it's just about popularity and then it's almost yeah. like okay do something else then don't rap no more you, it doesn't matter what you do people are still gonna follow you please stop using hip-hop as your fucking crutch because he rap really whack dog. Like, yeah and you know what's funny about that is like when you when you think about it to me there's some people that are really devout to hip hop, you know, that are really diehard and they defend it. And I was one of them for a long time. And I was like, no, that ain't hip hop and this and that and this and that. And uh, it's almost like a almost religious, almost like a dogma where you're trying to protect it. And then I started thinking, I was like, yo, a lot of kids that came from the hood, it was either basketball, crack or rap. Right. That's pretty much what it was. And growing up with that, dudes, what's the easiest one they could do? So they're too scared to sell crack. They can't shoot a fucking three-pointer to save their <laughs> life. So they fucking rap. And it just became that. So that upon that upon that. So it's, it's a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, mm. which starts to fade and lose quality yeah. as, it, as it progresses. Yeah. So in the end, guys like that use it as a stepping stone. And, and we get pissed off because, like, yo, you're literally stepping on us yeah. to get there. And you don't give a fuck about the mess you made here. And and we could throw stones all we want, but they're way too big to even pay attention. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. We, we could say the guy's name or whatever, but all we're really doing is, uh, you know, pushing that forward and snowballing that. So, yeah, I refuse to say that dude's name, too. Yeah. But, yeah, but, but not even to just get into that. I just, uh, 
I was just gonna say that like at, out of like actual like we're and that's not like hating it's like not I mean I guess it is I I, I don't it depends think, on who you ask well I don't think it is I'm I'm just saying I'm I'm literally saying if anybody that's ever called something hip hop there's a f- couple people then it's like that's the not, problem that's is that's the worst shit I've ever heard <laughs> yeah no, the problem like, is just like you're saying copy of a but now people are trying to copy him like I'm not saying his name either but yeah now there's more you know trying to do the same thing where the he's just, the poster child yeah and, yeah, and there's know? there's gonna be a kid. Uh, there's a kid now somewhere in his room, you know, uh, already writing his raps, his horrible raps, downloading beats from SoundCloud, things uh, like that. Already planning his homemade face tattoo. Yes, exactly. Like. Yeah, he's already <laughs> thinking of what to put where. Look like his four-year-old sister yeah. did it. And and he doesn't care about anything else. And it, it, it sucks that the world, you know, outside of what we do, kind of throws us all in the same bunch where they're like yo that's that rap hip-hop stuff yeah and it's like no if yeah. you really step into this you'll see that like look at the graph look at the b-boys look at like the jabberwockies yeah. like th- there's a there's a lot of people uh that go see them and it's like yo all of that all of those that that's hip-hop yeah. you know that's just one of the elements, of elements so there's people that go to vegas that think that rap or hip-hop is is a scary thing but they'll buy a ticket to watch the jabberwockers yeah, and it's right. like yo that's yeah. hip-hop <laughs> so you're enjoying it as we speak so it's one of those things and uh it's unfortunate that they do that it's fucking whack that they try to bunch us all together but all you could really do instead of trying to throw stones at it is just build a castle of stones as tall as they are or taller what I, what i've always dug though and i and i will say this is uh, about hip-hop you know, cause I, I pretty much, you know, I'm the age of hip hop. I, I, I fucking, I, like, I started break dancing, like, so I, I've had the elements yeah. too along the way, and I actually could break dance pretty good back in the day, and I know more, but <laughs> <laughs> for sure, not no more. I'll hurt myself. <laughs> but um, and we got no hip hop health insurance, bro. It, yeah. Don't Wake, do waking it. up in the morning Don't is like break it, dancing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> click, 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 yeah, clicking like, and popping. Uh, <laughs> Don't do it, rabbit. Crap. Don't do it. What, what are the <laughs> What I, what I never could do is like, I tried it too, graffiti and writing. I just I'm not good at it, dog. I, I, that's something I gave up on early. <laughs> I I just knew I I wasn't good. It was cool, like it was fun, the thrill, but I was like I'm not good at this. It looks like <laughs> shit. <dog. laughs> so so, but I I was good at breaking, and then I went and like I did music for a while, and I still got some like a few things, um here and there, but. Uh, like I, I, I've been through all the aspects, but what I kind of, when I kind of always dug about it is that there's a diversity Yeah. because that's what it started is the culture of different cultures. And then like, like even, okay, for example, like the golden era of the nineties is like, you could at that time when hip hop was playing anywhere, you would hear a song like say from a De La Soul and then an NWA and yeah. then a, or a tribe called quest and it, it was like all over the place but yeah. it still flowed so good dog. yeah it was it was, a, it was the opposite side of the like that's what was dope about it but well, it flowed so good yeah you know exactly because I mean? like, there was a there was a vibe to it like all, yeah. all the way like it, it took it was a soundtrack to your life if you were going the beastie boys you know, you know you're going through something and then you hear that and it, it's the soundtrack to that time you know yeah. brass monkey or whatever like there's certain songs like that good times maybe you know yeah there's certain songs time. that if, if you hear them now they take you back to where you were and it, they put you in that same state of mind and everything what i liked about it was coming from where i came from the streets whatever most of us so it, we had like four doors we had four options like yo if you're if you got stamina yeah. you're agile be a fucking b-boy yeah. if that ain't for you and you got a good eye uh, shit you can paint mm-hmm. if you're good with the technical shit and you're good with your hands you can dj or mm-hmm. make beats uh that's it, the calling i miss I, the eclipse had left his equipment here one of the nights after he dj yeah i was up there messing with it hey, man uh, that's like, what you've been dude, doing huh that's i was what like he, that's why the computer crashed <laughs> 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 seriously <laughs> i was like dude why didn't i st- do this when i oh, started this when i was a kid but you know i'm too old to probably start djing now i don't know no nah, you're, you're never, never too old yeah. bro you're never too old <laughs> hey shay started doing the fucking <laughs> awkward hand scratching <laughs> he knew it was a rap well i didn't get to the scratching but just the the song selecting and listening to what goes with what yeah the blending that was that was cool that was real cool so that that was dope coming from you know like i said and then like, oh i did my dj thing too i forgot yeah, to mention i that. tried that a little bit but i was like fuck this yeah like there i think it was just too 
too many moving parts for me. I was like, ah, that's a lot. So with, with graph, that, that's kind of where I started was like, I, I used to like to draw. So you give me a marker or you give me a can or whatever, like, okay, I, I could fucking, I could do this or that. And I wasn't the greatest, you know, but I, I could get busy. And then with the rhyming, like I like to read a lot. So I was like, okay. And then I like to write a lot. So I was like, okay, let me see if I could fit this in a flow. And uh, it just, it, you know, I dabbled with the DJ and, you know, made it, try to make a beat or two. I never tried to b-boy, to be honest. I was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to be good at that shit. The only thing I tried was the spin on the back on a piece of cardboard. Yeah, and you were like, it. Mm, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's all I can me. do. You retired. Yeah. I was, I was even in competitions for that shit, man. I was okay, dog. But if I do it now, yeah, I'll be on a stretcher in a little while. <laughs> but but, but that, that's a, the thing I, I, I hope I, at some point, like for hip-hop, because I, I felt like we've always – tried to do a good job of like bridging the gap yeah so like we do have different styles of hip-hop even on like b-side i'm talking about the b-side show but um but the thing is is i i I always wanted to get back to that is where you could have all the versatility but in one room and make it flow together yeah yeah. and you get what i'm saying and i've seen it i've seen it don't get me wrong i've seen it at a few shows it worked at a few shows like they'll have like these different styles of artists young and old and different styles and it works it works and that yeah. i wanted to get back to always work it should work like that eh, that's just me as a well, fan it was it was all in sync at one point in yeah. time where you went yeah. you went to a jam and like there were like the dj was was djing for the b-boys right and then the mc was just kind of like hyping people up and and that's what it was. It was it was all you know. And and if dudes if if painters were there, they weren't painting at the time, but they painted either before that or after that. So the inspiration was there. So the elements were pretty much all in the same room at the same time. Unfortunately, once the shit became corporate and you got fucking uh you know a hip hop beat in a McDonald's commercial and so on, a lot of the elements kind of went their own direction, kind of like a family where it's like, well, the b boys are gonna be over here. The DJs are way over there. The rappers are, they're way too into themselves. So yeah. they're wherever they want to go and then so on and so forth. And it, and it sucks. So to, to try to bring that together uh, is, is pretty, it's pretty hard to do. It's pretty hard to accomplish now. So shout out to anybody that can make that possible. Cause nah, like sure. the B side, like you said, you're bringing all of them here. And I've seen that come in and out of these doors. So oh, and thanks for also, Hey, for those that, might not know Paz is fucking hosted he's done all kinds of yeah man th- hey, i want to thank he's you part dude, of the for, fam, hey, for everything that you've done hey, like, <laughs> you, you might not even know but you've done a lot you like you helped me learn a lot uh the times you came and co-hosted to help us out dude like yeah, hey, no, man, we appreciate you I, too, brother. i appreciate you guys having me like i always say that because it's uh i feel that that sense of family that 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 uh goal that you guys have set which is to bring everybody together and do certain things like yeah. so that's why i'm like okay i'm down but there's a lot of people that I just refuse to, to associate with and be a part of. And I'm just like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, like, I you. And, uh, you know, it's no disrespect to them, but they're moving in a different direction. That's one thing I wanted to talk about, too, is uh, I think a lot of people have this illusion of competition. Right. Hip hop is competitive. You know, it is because everybody wants to be the best, as you should. Yeah. But at the same time, we don't all have the same goals. So if you rap. It doesn't mean that you want the same things I want. Right. I could want a two-story house. You could want a five-story house, a mm-hmm. mansion, or whatever. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you exactly. get what I'm saying? Yeah. You could you could want to own an. In- or just so somebody might just want a car. <laughs> some people might be like, yeah, exactly. Some you know, uh, some people want a car to get from A to B, and yeah. some people want a fucking helicopter. Yeah. Everybody's goals are different, yeah. and I think be- because a lot of guys get into it without setting goals they have this illusion of competition so everywhere they go mm. they feel like a target and they also look at everyone else as a target nah. and and you got to keep a certain percentage of that but if you do that that's where a lot of the backstabbing the shit talking the hating and so on and so forth yeah. that's where that shit comes into play yeah. because it's like yo uh you think that that guy's in it just for this just to be popular but you don't know that yeah. because that that's your ambition yeah. you think that he's getting the spotlight you deserve yeah. But he kind of doesn't care or so back, you know, or even what you might see like, oh, like this guy. Why does he get so many uh, more likes on his Instagram than I oh, he, like, you know, he and she, you know, he yeah. hasn't been through what I've been through, whatever it is. But you don't really know, like, you know, y- this guy might, you know, like you don't really know, because a lot of times they're probably not going to take the time to go actually 
you know, listen to any of their their, their lyrics. They just kind of knowing them off who the, what they've seen or what they see on social media or whatever it is. Yeah, it, they it's they like they compare the two, and I think with any art, when you compare your art, mm. it it hurts you. It's yeah. gonna hurt you. But yeah. it's like, yo, if if I gave rabbit, if everybody in this room had a canvas and I told you to paint. You know, a peach tree. Everybody's I told you I can't paint, <laughs> dog. <laughs> I fucking told you, dog. Yeah, mine would look see, like a see? stick. Well, I, don't know. <laughs> I paint stick like figures. shit. Yeah. Okay, but go ahead. But you, you get what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah, so, yeah. like, everybody's going to paint it different. But if you're looking over at mine constantly, you're either going to steal my idea mm-hmm. or stop painting altogether yeah. or throw the fucking canvas across the room. Like, so it shouldn't be that way. Yo, just just fucking paint yeah. just do your do, thing do, do you yeah <laughs> and, and, hey. but it goes back to the illusion the competition hey know? i got i got a fucking perfect example of what you just said bro it just gave me a flashback back in like elementary school they had this fucking it was like a christmas theme fucking and you could enter your shit or whatever was it cards and yeah. it was uh no like creations like uh people were doing like little houses know, like, yeah shit like that like different things and it and they all tended to be and i started seeing what people were doing i ended up entering it and i remember i started doing like kind of what people were doing yeah what i had saw and i fuck i and it wasn't it wasn't working at all to the (laughs) point to the point where i I, what the fuck is this (laughs) why why isn't mine coming out like that and i just i completely just scrapped it i remember we we, and i was a kid too at the time remember being in the garage and i just remember uh, you know what I saw some other stuff somewhere, and I started thinking, I'm just going to go a whole different route, yeah. right? And I went a whole completely different route and made some crazy Santa Claus that wasn't these collages that people were doing, but I just made a whole ass yeah. out of a, I forgot, it was like a paper bag stuffed and painted, and it was crazy, though. And I ended up winning, like, the the theme award, the That's, best theme yeah, award. See, but I was like, because I did, if I would have went with that, I would have been lost in the sauce, bro. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> hey, I have a story like that too. Same thing. Uh, wait, it was like elementary. We entered like a, a cake decorating contest, but it was like a fundraiser. So like after they, you know, they judge it on the kids can come buy like a little uh, piece of the cake yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. it was. But uh, um, man, ours was ugly as shit, but it was the it best. Was not very tasting. artistic, but the thing was, what we did is we we put like so many different flavors of sweets on there. We even put like shredded gum that looked like grass on the bottom. Remember the Popeye gum? Yeah. Like we put that. <laughs> it was the grass, but we had like gum on a cake, like gum candy and all kinds. And and the judges hated it, but the kids loaded it. Like ours sold out <laughs> yeah, quick. Yeah, the kids said, "Look at all the sweets on there." Like, yeah. <laughs> so that yeah, that's a, when you when you when you use that as an example for hip hop, like the guy the the people that like that guy we talked about earlier his music they're the kids that just want the sweets they just want the teeth rotting the sweets they just want that they're not really they don't give a shit about the art like with what he did you know it's but but either way you guys won he won like you it was a victory so i but i was talking about competition and uh i I think that that's what creates a lot of bullshit within the scene and it's distasteful where it's like yo man i don't want to be a part of this scene if it's like that i'm not saying that we should all fucking hold hands and and everybody should collaborate and then everybody's the greatest and everybody gets a trophy definitely not but i'm saying like yo a lot of this behind the scenes petty shit it's 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 just think about it i'll use this as an example how many west coast rappers are really cracking at one given time to me I've only seen no more than two or three maximum. Yeah. It's, it's almost like we're not allowed to have five or six or seven different cats from a scene. Like we're only allowed one guy. At, That's at fucked time. up, man. And I, I seen something about that, too, that someone else posted recently. This was like a month or so ago. And it was something like that on the Like, why isn't it that? Yeah, we can't have like all this bubbling at once. I, ju- I just don't get it either, bro. That shit's it's crazy. it's literally the politics of it where it's like, yeah. well, that guy doesn't represent me because we didn't grow up from the same neighborhood. But at the same time, like, you know, I end up in a, in a jail cell with you and we stand for the same things. But you didn't realize that till we ended up in jail. Together. Yeah. So you had to realize it. Till yeah. you had to realize it. And it sucks. But, you know, at the same time, I don't circle back and try to like. Uh, I, I definitely don't try to prove myself to those people anymore. Yeah. Because I feel like if I do that, I'm going to put so much energy into that that I'm really not going to focus on being a father and creating music. All I'm going to do is try to be out there proving that I'm the toughest, proving that I'm the best. I feel and you on that, Doug. I, I really like what you just said. Like, I'm, that's what I, like, I, I'm, unfortunately for my brother, Doug, he's like my, like, 
He hears a lot of the venting that I have to do sometimes. It's a good brother him, right there. Him and my chick. His face. Hey, him, they can't see his yeah, face. Yeah, no, but he's shit. like, fuck. Hey, <laughs> him and my chick. He took a big that's drink that's right That's why now, I wrap you know? myself up in all this technology. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you hide in the technology. <laughs> hey, him and my chick, dog, they hear so much shit like, that I'm like, going, like, all right, I got to do that. This is what I'm going to do now. And like, and I, like, I get like... Like over aggressive sometimes, but then I have to step back, and eventually I would step back on my own and and check myself. But it's like sometimes I have to throw these things off of them, so they can kind of throw back what I need to. Yeah, you know, and and you know what I use that as like, uh, but the way I look at that is like, if you don't if you don't have somebody <laughs> like that, you are that ball of negativity. Yeah, it just yeah. starts to fester and it starts to spill over into everything that you do and if you got people like that and they're willing to kind of like dodge your punches for a bit and it'd be like whoa 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 what are you really mad at yeah, yeah. and then like well shit was that your fault you're the one that didn't do this and yeah. you're like fuck you're right yeah. and you know I, I think uh that's what's lacking too is like there's there's not a lot of ogs per se in in hip-hop rest in peace ganja k that was one of the ogs that kind of like because you know i hate to keep going back to the jail thing but i remember uh, I was in a county jail and there was two rappers in there and uh, one of them was a Mexican dude and one of them was a black dude and uh, I was just asking is one of them was ghostwriting for a prominent uh, Chicano rap artist at the time and the other guy was working with Nocturnal who was working with Dre at the time so I had like a little bit of both sides of it and I started to notice like who was really more open and wanted to see me grow uh -huh. and I was like oh okay so there is politics within this as well but I, I say that because they they kind of took me under their wing and said, hey, you know, this is what you're going to run into. You know, be cautious of this. What are you after? What are you trying to do? And I feel like I learned and Razkaz, I met Razkaz in prison. I mean, I couldn't have a better mentor, somebody to kind of show me like, hey, shout look. out to the homie. Man. Yeah. Like with him, like, you know, I, I didn't I didn't want to have him introduce me to Dre. I, I wanted to know how vital is it to have a publicist you know what what, it, what impact does this have or that yeah i had books i was reading i was trying to learn the, the industry aspect and i mean he's been signing major labels he's worked with dre he's, he's worked with some huge huge people and has classic records and he's still doing shit he's consistent so you know i'm grateful to have met him but it's those ogs that kind of teach you and what sucks is i think uh because of the business aspect a lot of guys refuse to give each other any kind of input whatsoever. Even 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 just like uh, you know, uh uh constructive criticism where it's like, hey look, that's cool, but isn't that a little close to what he did? Maybe if you threw a little bit more of yourself in there, you'd win, right, Rabbit? Do you do you that that's the thing though, but do you think that is because they're afraid you might oh, surpass absolutely. them. Yeah, of, of uh, course. Is that straight out? Of like, course. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, uh, and I hate to say it and sound fucked up, but I think a lot of old guys don't want to hang it up. They don't want to retire gracefully. They end up like Muhammad Ali, and it, you know, one of the greatest of all time. But if he took one or two less fights, you know, he probably would have lived out his years a little bit better. Correct? Am, like, am I wrong uh, for saying that? No, no. I think like uh, who, who's the perfect? I'm, I'm thinking of the uh, the fuck the quarterback, uh, uh, Elway. Yeah. He went out, didn't he? Do it after that Super second, Bowl. that but two back. Yeah. He yeah, knew, and then he, he knew they it. had. Oh. He knew they had one more, and okay, this is it. Yeah. And I'm out. He went out. You go out on yeah, top, yeah. and I think when you go out gracefully like that, it it it, your jersey is in the rafters. You know, you, you're, th you're there. You're the star in the sky. Like, you found your place. But then you tarnish that by sticking around and hating on the younger guys. Like and Brett becoming, Favre. And becoming that bitter old dude oh, yeah. and playing all injured and, like, it's everybody's fault and the industry is whack now. I see a lot of that, you know, and, and that's why, again, I move the way I do is because I don't want to be around a lot of the bitter guys uh, who really don't want to see me get a dollar more than them. Or, or Hey, so, so let me ask you this, man. Um, um, if say a, a, a younger artist um came came to you and and kind of wanted you know without directly saying it but started trying to work under your wing like how 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 would you approach that uh, like off top because i know you you've mostly made your own moves and done your own thing but what, what i what i like to do is if there's people like that that are close enough yeah to uh to hit me up and and, and get advice and kind of uh shadow what i do 
I like to watch them play first because if I don't know what abilities you have, how yeah. can we improve that? Yeah. So I'll be like, yeah, yeah. So it's it's Seinfeld. A good example was uh, there was a comedian. I forget his name. Uh, he's huge. He's famous now. But at the time, he was opening up for Seinfeld at, at some like smaller spots. And uh, he asked Seinfeld for advice. And Seinfeld's like, quit. <laughs> <laughs> quit now. Yeah, and Yeah. And dude, like, he's like, <laughs> heroes and my hero told me to quit fuck that so five eight years go by whatever it is dude is doing movies he's huge and he runs into seinfeld again and he's like you remember me i'm no yo obviously he knew who the fuck he was but he's like yo do you remember you told me this he's like yeah but did you look look, <laughs> look where you are look where you are like yeah. because think about it if all you had to do was tell whoever it is that just quit like you don't got it and if they're you know if they're willing to about face and walk away from it, then this was never for them. And they were just going to be in a fucking way anyway. Mm -hmm. And for me, I got that experience. I was in the Twin Towers. Pretty much everybody in there was either fighting life or, or, or waiting to catch the chain. Like, it was it was a really, really, uh, you know, tense. You tense. <laughs> you feel the animosity. It yeah, was really, yeah. really, like, really bad. And it was a, a dude from Grape Street. And uh, he had heard, you know, I guess that I rapped or whatever. And uh, he asked me to rap for him. And this is a dude that's, he's done. He's washed up. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's never seeing the streets again. And he asked me to rap. So I'm thinking, what can I say to this dude? Number one, to not offend the motherfucker. Uh, number two, to impress him. You know, like, there, there was a lot to it. So I'm like, shit. So I kicked a couple lines for him. And he told me, he's like, oh, that shit, uh, that you ain't got, how old are you? You ain't got it. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I wanted to say fuck you. <laughs> yeah. But. I am saying fuck you by being here today. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. I've I've been to Switzerland. I've traveled to Europe. I've done this. I've done that. Yeah. I've I've done a few things. Work with some legendary cats. So that is my fuck you. Not not just the fact that I'm free to do these things, but because I actually people will remember my name when it's all said. Oh yeah. And uh, you know that that's that was my Seinfeld. That was my uh, fucking quit. And I got I got told that by a validated gang member. You know somebody that's like, you know you're 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 Life's in danger right now if, if you offend this dude. You know what I'm saying? He had pull. He was running the whole thing. So if a guy like that tells you and, and it doesn't scare you, yeah, then you know what I'm saying? I uh, mean, that's how we we should approach it anyways, I think. It's like, and, and then that's the thing. I, I always have to sit back. Sometimes, like I, t like I told you, I vent to my brother and this and that, but sometimes it's like, but I, on the flip, I always forget to, oh, man, this dude, is a legend he just told you man you're you're good at this shit right yeah like you know what i'm yeah. saying doug and like uh, that's the shit sometimes i forget uh and i i mean i i reflect on it myself eventually but it's like sometimes people got to remind me like yeah of, of of uh a good example i don't know if you've seen the movie uh uh hands of stone where uh it's a roberto duran movie with robert de niro and he's like he's like you're roberto duran now get in there and act like it because he he wasn't he wasn't himself he wasn't fighting the way he usually fought yeah. and I think a lot of that comes from you being a humble guy and also you focusing on the work so you forget people are giving you your roses while you're alive like yeah. yo rabbit yo you got ten years under your belt doing yeah. this most guys don't last a year or two you got ten you know your season like people are, are giving you your your trophies now and you know and you you don't want to rest on your on your laurels and be like yeah yeah because you're not that kind of guy i never got that impression yeah from and then plus i i'm like um i mean i know you're the same but we're always trying to like we're trying to do better and better exactly, and better so yeah. we ain't like okay wait save that tell me that when i'm do what i want to do here and like that that's the thing like but as <laughs> like an artist standpoint like like you were saying is i, I don't think an artist is it probably ever done creating? I don't. I don't no. think somehow we're still gonna figure I mean, out a way to do something. Exactly. <laughs> you, you look at the. You look at Picasso, how he progressed and changed what yeah. he did. Yeah. And you know, people working in different mediums, so they paint, they sculpt, they you know, they do music, they compose, they do different shit because, and they constantly learn. They're constantly growing and and evolving, chasing after that that mastery, chasing after that, and you know, that's one of the big ones. So like for me, I think. Uh, the, the next project that I got that I'm working on is called Dance on My Grave. And it kind of comes from that, where it's pretty much like... You I, always got the sick titles too, bro. I, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I figured, like, I was, you know, I was just kind of looking at what was going on around, and I was like, you know what? This is before Wreck passed, but 
I was just kind of looking around and I was like, wow, like the Nipsey thing, like when Nipsey passed. And, you know, people showed him love, but it wasn't until he died. Where yeah, he, like, yeah. All of a sudden, like, you know, he was worthy of being, uh, you know, tattooed on your arm. He was worthy of being your screensaver. He was worthy of mm -hmm. being, you know, your default picture. He was now he was worthy because he died. And like, I, I feel like, you know, a lot of that is bullshit. A lot of those people just can't wait to dance on your grave. A lot of those people can't wait till you're gone to go ahead and say like, oh yeah, I was always a fan. I feel like death is like a good opportunity to expose a lot of people. So or it, I was like, I was his best friend. We yeah, used to hang out all the time. Yeah. Or, or I'm the one that did this. And yeah. you know, it's a lot of that. And I, I feel like with, with rap, with hip hop, where I am, I, that title fit. So the alias is Thomas Post Thomas because I feel like there's a lot of people, <laughs> like when COVID hit, for example, I wasn't able to really do shows. So there was people hitting me up that are like, yo, when did this drop? Yo, I didn't know this came out. Yo, what album is this off of? And I'm like, yo, this shit is two to four years old. And they're barely catching up. Why? Because they're quarantined. They had to stay home mm -hmm. and yeah. find music. And Definitely. now they're discovering songs in my catalog that are old. So I'm like, shit. Uh, so that means that if I do... 10 albums i'm gonna die and then you're gonna listen to album number five six seven eight and then you know what i mean it's it's gonna work that way so okay well let me beat you to the punch this is dance on my grave and the whole thing is is all about a lot of personal stuff homies passing away things i've gone through with my son and you know a lot, a lot of personal stuff so there's no features on it it's nothing like that it's, it's more personal and i've never really had a chance to do anything like that it's always been you know uh stories and and uh you know I'm dope, you're whack, and this is the state of hip-hop, and whatever it is, you know, the philosoph my philosophy on shit. But now it's like, hey, look, this is a little more personal. Is, is that a, um, one, one producer, or do you have different producers on for, that? So for the last couple projects, they were all tied to one producer. On this one, I have different producers. So mm -hmm. I, got, I got to work with Domingo, who's worked with, like, Eminem, Big Pun, and people like Crazy. that. So that, that's a blessing, you know, working with him. Uh, Shout-out to the homie uh, Manuel, uh, One Shot Everything. And... Uh, you know, John Henry, uh, Space Boy, Boogie X, he's done stuff with Conway. You know, there's there's different cats that have production on the album Default who produced most of my first album. So there's there's a variation of shit on there, you know, different producers. But a lot of it is that. It's just, you know. Did uh, you did you hear, I mean, did you hear the uh, certain beat and decide to go in that direction? Were you already going that direction as far as writing and doing something different? Or um, did these kind of you kind of pick the beats to take you into that element? Yeah, I, I just want to know how that happened. Yeah, you know what? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick the setting and uh -huh. then and then write the movie. Okay, it was more like uh, I had it, it. It usually it's it's weird. It's like uh, I'll, I'll hear a beat and then I'm like, all right, cool, that fits these lines that I had. Um, or I'll, I'll hear a beat makes you feel a certain way. I'll write from scratch. But because I'm in this in this zone right now everything that's being pulled in yeah, is, being, is you. being you know turned into that so mm -hmm. like there's just certain things that i you know i got to say like uh you know i said shed blood they consider me street shed tears they consider me weak no love from my city and it's hitting me deep you kidding they play my shit out in italy chief they sell a couple tickets let them sit in my seat so if i gotta die to hang my picture on your wall don't hang my picture up at all. Yeah, that's right. It's just like saying you know, to, 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 the, to the people that, you know, once you're gone, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, oh, I was always, you know, I got this, I got that. Like, yeah. no, you no, you don't, and no, you weren't. Like, and I inspired him to write that one song. Yeah, yeah, huh? like, <laughs> that was my, yeah. And, you know, it's not to shit on people like that, but but it is, where it's like, look, let, let's be honest. A lot of people don't fuck with you till you're dead. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of want to beat him to the punch on that album. That was that was dope. That's a dope concept and everything and the way it worked out. And especially just having this time where we, we can all actually reflect on different shit. Yeah. And it's fucked that like all these like one fucking thing after another keeps happen having <laughs> this to happen. Fucking year. But this man, yeah, this year's been trippy, bro. But it's like it's also shown uh, us all like kind of our like our character like where you're really yeah, at. Yeah, like we, we okay, I'm kind of going nuts from what being quarantined but yeah but i'm still using it in my best way like we're doing stuff at the hot like fucking painting i'm fucking yeah. tearing walls out i don't give a shit <laughs> dog i'm i'm doing shit productive while i'm at home and 
yeah. and you know with the family so you know we yeah i wanted to um just quit one of the questions i wanted to ask you is um you know because i know you're, you're focused on on your you know your project and i know especially with everything going on with the services and stuff like that but like what do you do when you're not like creating or, or doing something for that like like to unwind i i have a feeling it's movies because you, you use that analogy a lot yeah but yeah is it, that what it is so like to watch movies i'm, I'm big on the books? movies yeah. i'm big on the movies i'm big on the books like i don't know i think i think it's from you know not having parents at home where tv was kind of the parent and uh yeah watching a lot of a lot of movies growing up and uh that it just kind of the whole experience I, I like that whole experience you know going to the drive-in you know fucking throwing on a movie uh kind of like taking the bits and pieces out of it that I yeah like there's it. inspiration you can find in some yeah movies there's, that, yeah know. there's a lot and uh you know i try not to be excessive with the movie samples in uh in the music <laughs> because i mean that stuff's been done a billion times i try to find the real like uh rare ones where people can't tell what it's from or where it's from but some of them like the joker there's stuff in the, in the last joker movie where it's like i gotta use a piece or two of that cause yeah that was nuts that yeah was crazy. and it, there's a lot of things that he said that you know I'm, that a lot of people identified with and you know i i did too so there's yeah. pieces that i want to use but movies that's a big one movies and books and yeah, that's i gotta get back into shape too that's another one where like I, i've been to work out oh yeah. man i i fucking i'm guilty of that too <laughs> but you know what though the the work i do and then plus like um all the stuff I've been doing at the pad, I still feel like I've been getting my yeah. a little bit of. I've been getting my shit in, bro. Like I've been. That's working what I'm saying. Fuck, I've, I've never bro. seen you. I've never <laughs> seen you. Uh, f- you know, fluctuate between heavy, skinny, yeah. you know, <laughs> super <laughs> muscular. I stay like fucking that. slim. You know, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 that's that work, bro. Me too. But, but the good thing is, um, I also I think I haven't really aged. I don't think. The, bro, <laughs> you look exactly <laughs> the fucking same. <laughs> Yeah, that's real hey, shit. Uh, there's a little bit more gray, like, but yeah. Wait, than that. Hey, I'm embra- <laughs> I was saying, dog, well, I, w- I was telling somebody else, I I've been embracing the gray. Yeah. Like I I've been noticing, like, it's cool, man. People dig the gray. I don't give a shit. It's, it's season, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I should have spray painted some gray a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have been further <laughs> along. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> that's the OG. Yeah, that's yeah. the OG right yeah, there. That means I know. Uh, I, hey, I, he's wise. That means I've been through yeah. some shit. Uh, I gotta listen to him. Yeah, real shit. <laughs> no, but just my last question, then, and like, and then is just that also like I know there's probably like a few that pop, but what's the first one that sticks out when it, when you think? Your favorite show that that you rocked that you that you performed at like what city what where was it which one was it what year was it? Oh uh, shit! A favorite? Like I think one of the ones you just thought was the dopest? Like just thought the crowd everything just went. Uh, I think one of the more memorable ones. Well, the f- a fun one was the one I did in uh, the Czech Republic when I did Hip Hop Kemp because that was like one of the biggest crowds I've ever been in front of, and like that was it was nuts to be in front of that, and then like they don't really know who you are so you s- you're still in that prove yourself kind of level yes. and you only got so many songs before they kind of like you know start getting sleepy do they know english there? yeah or yeah oh, they, they could do. they could recite a lot of songs oh, in english they might not necessarily know how to carry a conversation but mm. they know every you know onyx song and shit like that <laughs> like they they're able to rap j cole lyrics or whatever but that one was was dope because I got to win them over. I had a small window of time to do it, but I got to win them over to the point, you know, and, y- and you're just seeing like a sea of people to where like, the, you know, the la- who knows how far it goes back or whatever, but you just, it's kind of a blur. But then you could still see motion. And when you see motion, you got them moving. Your music, your performance got them moving. So that was a big one for me. Another one uh, that tripped me out was uh, when we did the tour with Sean P and we did Boston first time in boston and i didn't realize it then but we do the show we're performing and the whole fucking crowd is just kind of standing there arms crossed and i'm like and there's not a lot of street street dudes there's street dudes in there but it wasn't a whole like a hood crowd or whatever but there's dudes in there and you know every, everyone's just kind of just standing there arms crossed and i'm just trying to i'm just wrapping my guts out like fuck it if i'm gonna go out i'm gonna go out right shooting. i'm gonna go out fighting so ah, i'm giving them everything i got it wasn't until i was done that the whole entire room basically like exploded and it made no fucking sense to me because i'd <laughs> never seen that before right so then i thought about it later i was like wait a minute this is where all the colleges are and i was like they were literally dissecting everything i was saying every aspect of my performance was being analyzed and critiqued until i was done with my performance and that was that was a weird one where it was like shit i had never been in front of anybody like that but that was 
that was fun. That was fun. It's dope to, to know that because you would think Boston, you know, st- you'd think they're just going, ah, come on, let's it's get to garbage. the car. He's garbage. It's garbage. Let's get go to the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, and you, uh, yo, that's another thing, too. I, I, we learned a term with, with Rec. We did a show in, I want to say, Rhode Island. And uh, this one dude had that, I nailed that. He was Peter Griffin, basically, that, that accent. And homegirl goes, She's like a fucking swamp Yankee. She called him a swamp Yankee. <laughs> and we just started laughing like, yo, what the fuck is a swamp Yankee? He, he's a swamp Yankee. Blah, 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 blah. And like, it's weird. Like, cause I guess everywhere you go, they just have that, you know, th- their groups, their little subgroups. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking crazy. See, that's what I need to do, man. I need to travel more, bro. But I say that, and we're in a fucking lockdown. Fucking yeah, I know. It's and then killing me. And then, and that's the other thing, man. Uh, is like literally, I know excuses, excuses. But this was like I, I even told my lady, like, I'm traveling this year, and then fucking 2020 hit, and <laughs> I ain't doing shit. So. I yeah, I chose to kind of lay low too during the whole time. Yeah, but, but you got time we'll to plan it happens. out. Yeah, and now we're planning shit. So yeah, and we'll, plus we'll we launched a podcast, man. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Hey, we still got yeah. we could still chop it up with the homies and see what's going on, man. Hey, pause with the with the new album. Um, you mentioned no features. I I did want to say like, you you mentioned you 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 work with a lot of big dogs, man, and like, crazy like because. Like, I've actually got to chop it up with some of these cats and been a fan of some of these cats, but you work with a lot of, like, that cool-ass names. Like, you mentioned Sean P., man. That's yeah. A, that's a <laughs> legend right there. But so another it, one that probably didn't get it, the roses he should have gotten until he yeah, was Yeah, exactly. Gone, like, like, like that That was uh, that was another one. Where like, yeah. I think uh, almost a year after the tour, he passed. Uh, may- maybe a little less than that, like eight months or something. And it was just like, fuck. Because you got to remember, like, this guy's been around everybody. Oh, Pri- yeah. Priority records. Like, they've done shit, f- like, duck down. Like, they've done shit for a long time. So he's kind of, a lot of these guys, AG, big shout out to AG. I mean, these guys are rhyming with Big Pun and Big Al well, and guys Master like that. Ace yeah, DJ, you know, they're, they're in the studio with DJ Premier, Easy Mo B, people like that. And now you're next to them. And you, you got to you gotta watch your etiquette because there's certain things and, and whatever. But then to learn from them and then to vibe with them and crack jokes and get, gain insight and see how they move and see what they do. And you're like, fuck, that's dope because you're walking amongst giants. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, hopefully when it's all said and done, you become one. And then they have that. Like what what's crazy is that part is, like I said, like I forget sometimes, too. But when that same artist like that, that's pretty much a legend in this shit has that same respect for you, yeah. bro. That shit is like... It's, yeah, beyond, that's beyond words, bro. Yeah, beyond you, words. you can't, like, there's no, no... I don't know if you could put something on that. Yeah, like, it's precious. I'm, I'm, I mean, some people don't get it again. Like we said earlier, it's more about just let me do whatever I could do to be as popular as I can, but people that really understand are really in there, like, making music, creating, and, like, when you get to chop it up with someone like that and... And hear their feedback or, or critique yeah. on what you're doing. That shit is fucking dope, bro. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Pe- I mean, people literally pay for that opportunity. Yeah, exactly. You know? there and, it and, is. and if you and if you get it based off of your ability, you know that's that says a lot, and, and that should give you confidence to keep moving forward. You know. So um, as we tail this off, my brother, um, I wanted to ask: Is it? I know you're 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 you know finishing the project and doing all that too um but at the same time when this happens to hit with our brother passing it has it been you know difficult to get into that work mode or is it more pushed you into that work mode i mean i think it's it's pushed me to try to do it yeah but honestly like you know without exposing too much like you know i gotta i manage some apartments i gotta evict a tenant you know i got my drama with my kid's mom you know child and dealing with child protective services and yeah. then the family court and then you know my best friend passes away you know and, and there's a lot of these things where it's like okay ready set go be the greatest rapper of all time ready yeah. set go and uh, create a classic song you know and it's just like yo like i, I don't even want to get out of fucking bed yeah you know what i'm saying i don't want to i don't want to at the ball like so it, it is difficult but I, tr- I what i try to do is just kind of grind it and refine it and and take all that until it's rolling and then create something hopefully timeless out of it you know what i'm saying that's yeah i and i think that's like 
everything has to be put in in its proper perspective bro because there's a lot of like even right now with uh, with my regular shit that i do during the day and then this like i'm in a like my own quandary and this is l like this is later in life from i don't i've never dealt with the situation that's at hand for yeah. me right now in my life and i feel like i'm seasoned to where i should be able to ha but it, again like you said it's like i'm in a position i've never been in in my life so um with all the the seasoning and all the things that i've taken along i'm still trying to put it in proper perspective and stay positive and go you yeah. know what i'm still gonna handle it this way i'm still gonna go yeah. and do what i always do so that's uh, it's cool to hear someone else say like like, like some of the shit i'm feeling bro that's, <laughs> like that's human real, that's exactly. human exactly but we need to hear it sometimes yeah. you know i so. want that to always be at the core of what i do yeah it's like yeah. okay yeah just you know i i know i know sometimes i lose points for being uh may maybe i'm I, too approachable <laughs> too accessible whatever uh but in reality like it's the human experience that i want to document you know what i mean yeah so yeah and that and that's the thing too you can't get these conversations back and certain things you hear from people it's like you ain't gonna get that back no matter what your your ultimate goal is um i guess it's like don't uh, don't lose the the side of the journey along the yeah. way. I guess I don't know yeah, what the, the fucking the, yeah, saying is. Yeah, there's a quote is. that says. Yeah. Uh, oh, I seen a I seen a meme that said uh, it was it was a turtle, and uh, it was a turtle and a dragon. I, it says some shit like, "What's your favorite part of the journey?" No, what's your favorite part of some shit? And then the, the dragon uh, the dragon said the company. So for everybody, it's different. I remember when I I met this dude uh, Wessels when I was in Supermax. He pretty much, you know, after that he shot me a letter like, "Yo, keep doing what you're doing," and he said like always remember it's not about the the destination it's about the journey yeah. and you think about it you're like oh shit along the way like like the book the alchemist for example yeah he ended up finding the treasure at the end but it was the journey that made him richer yeah so yeah yeah that's but, the that's the shit i hope you know because i need to hear that right now so i hope ever anybody that's watching this or or uh, is gonna tune in listen to it on the way to work whatever um you know keep that in mind we're all like you said we're all human yeah. I think uh, we all relate more than we think sometimes. Yeah. Maybe just people put it out. They're different of how yeah. they're feeling about it. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, any shout outs, brother? And let them know where they could get at you and all that stuff, too. And uh, and then we'll we'll big up the, the website for Rex project products, too. Yeah. So, I mean, the shout out, I always say, like, shout out to everybody that tuned in because the yeah. people that are actually paying attention to this, they're taking their time to make it this far and actually hopefully, you know, get something from it to actually listen and try to mine something out of it and find something they could take away and use. So shout out to them. Shout out to you guys for taking your time to make this happen. Uh, I know you guys probably don't feel it at the moment, but like it is crucial to us as artists. Like, Hey, okay. You got, you guys are making this happen for us. Mm -hmm. You guys don't got to do this. Oh shit. no, I feel it, bro. Yeah, I, I do because and that's why I'm, that's the reason I haven't stopped. Cause I, I could have easily just said, I, Hey man, it's quarantine. We can't do the show, but yeah. we were doing it from our house in our garage. Yeah. B side. Make we it happen. Like, we did, we <laughs> do zoom now. We do shit. one way or another. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Shout out to everybody that tuned in and, uh, just, you know, everybody out there maintaining, like, you know, as far as, you know, individual names. I mean, really right now it's just wreck one, you know, rest in peace. So, yeah just trying to make sure that name is is you know the legacy lives on you know yeah and it and it is already man everybody get go get you some merch um some of that shit hey i got some of the original shit like he he made sure i like hey yeah i told you before he's like you you better wear that on the b-side or if you host a show <laughs> and, I, and i'm like all right, hey dog trust me i got you dog like because yeah. they were all and most of the time he, he always uh, like came with dope ass shirts i think yeah the designs yeah, yeah the designs were always on point with the with the hip-hop feel so i'm i'm with it man so rest in peace of the brother rec one sure. man and uh you know the the legacy lives on like you said pause through um we'll get back to it and these good vibes with the shows yeah. and people networking and having fun and watching a good hip-hop show man that's what it's about yeah. man. so Hey, uh, thank you once again. Oh, where can they get at you? Let them know uh, where to get out all your music and all that. The, the easiest way is just at P-A-W-Z and the number one. Okay. And that'll take you to the Instagram, Twitter, and it just links there to get you to the YouTube, the Spotify, and everything else. 
That's what's up this week. There it is, man. Another dope episode, man. Rabbit Season Podcast. We're just having good conversations with some good folks that are really out there grinding and doing their thing, man. And we appreciate that. No matter what aspect of the art it is, um, we're here to big it up. And I hope we can keep doing it. Thank you guys that do tune in, man. We'll be back again next week, man. Peace. Peace.